Benjamin loves to browse books, and the more scattered they are and careless their piles, the more comfortable he is. Even in high tide and amidst the crash of surf, he finds reading to be a form of meditation. Catherine loves calmer waters instead. In the afternoon, for instance, when the wind settles and the rush of day gives way to reading, and the sun rakes a softer angle across the pages. Turn left. Follow the bend. The sea currents carve a path. Those who see the way of nature shall find it, even though it is no ordinary path, and it leads only where you are meant to go. Turn right. Come to a clearing. Neither Benjamin nor Catherine question why the little girl is there, reaching for a book. They smile and help her, absent or of thought or wonder. They see that the little girl is of the sea. The sea folds time and space, so years may pass in minutes, and minutes move like the moments you relish. Once a little girl, now a young woman, still of the sea, who no longer needs help. Instead, the young woman is a guidepost for how they find and lose each other in the sea. It is what someone must have meant, that they must be together, yet separate. There is a current that prompts them. There is a wave that washes over them. Benjamin turns left again, in a movement that is half walking and half swimming. He is wont to slip under water, and his vision is as clear as day, as if the convex lenses of the water were just what he needed to see better. Catherine follows suit though is a measure hesitant and curious. She arrives at a wall of a sea and loses her bearing on whether left or right is the way to go. Sometimes the right decision is not to decide, and the right move is to stay put. Sure enough, in no time she finds the leaning of the sea to the right, and the concave of the wall complements the convex of the sea. How joyful she is now! How comforting the salt wash that she breathes in! Benjamin takes her hand, and they follow the nautilus of their currents. Far to the horizon, they see the skylight of evening sidle along the declining light of day, like sheets of linen billowing in the gentle wind. There is faith required in this. There is no reason to invoke, no skepticism in that nautilus of the sea. There is an order to things, after all, Benjamin realizes. There is purpose to the rush of uncertainty, Catherine realizes in turn. They both remember a story about a young man so disenchanted that things around him began to talk. It startled him at first, but he came to understand that truths require pallets of courage and brushstrokes of belief. For what purpose and to what end? For nothing and to be swept down and spun repeatedly for anything that they can become. The colors of the sea dissipate, the temperatures turn cold, that sinking feeling in the stomach more pronounced than ever. Benjamin and Catherine look at each other, and the gaunt in their cheeks and the pallor in their eyes retreat. They smile, they sigh, they chuckle like children, who now see that the frightful things are just a story. The ending always sheds light on everything.
Benjamin and Catherine spill like waterfalls into another sea altogether. They remember the absent-minded bump along a corridor of books, one or two books dropping from an armful, both of them bending down and reaching down in synchrony.